Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome to part four of our scikit-learn with Python and machine learning for uh, investing tutorial series. Um, in this video, what we're going to be doing is learning how to parse the data. So a lot of times your data is going to be found online and you're going to need to know how to get that data out and from the internet um, and you know store it somewhere on your computer. Um, other times you might get a data set from somebody, but that data is not, um, you know, it usually comes with more data than you want and you kind of want to restructure that data and all that. So now we're going to be talking about here, we're going to be actually acquiring the data and then we'll, uh, in the next video, we'll talk about how, how we're going to structure that data. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing that we want to have, um, is in fact, let me show you guys again, um, this is assuming you guys have downloaded um, the package here. So pythonprogramming.net, and then we're going to go slash downloads, slash intra, capital Q for quarter, dot zip. Hit enter, and that will download this file here, this 243 megabyte file. I'm going to cancel it. Um, so if you haven't downloaded that, you'll need to go ahead and get that, and then extract that whatever. My C drive is very small, so I've actually, my, it's not being stored on my C drive. I've got it stored on one of my other um, drives. Um, so I have mine stored at, um, at least for the purposes here, X backups intracorder, and that's where, um, where this is. And then we're going to be concerning ourselves with, uh, for now, uh, debt to equity. So we're going to kind of analyze the debt to equity ratio and use machine learning to see if there's any sort of insights that we can gather about debt to equity um, compared to stock price, compared to um, the market. So the idea is, can we look at just debt to equity and figure out what companies to invest in based on their debt to equity and based on whether or not uh, historically that debt to equity ratio um, is the ratio of companies that tend to beat the market in earnings. Um, honestly, uh, I, I don't expect that we'll find anything uh, very insightful with that singular uh, feature, uh, that feature being debt to equity. Um, and eventually we wanna add lots of features. So we have all kinds of stats. So let me open up key stats and let's just look at, um, look at Apple and we'll open up from 2003. Although they might not even have a debt to equity actually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they do. Okay. So Apple back in 2003, this was the stats. And again, um, what I've done for you guys is I've pulled, basically these are historical um, web pages. So this is from 2003, January 20th. Um, um, this is what you would have gotten if you parsed Yahoo at that time. Um, so these are the HTML web pages and we can, you know, control you to view the source or you can always do like right click view page source. And this is the source in here. So it's just like parsing the website. We just aren't actually connecting to the Yahoo servers, overloading their servers. So here we have the page and we're interested in debt to equity, which is right here. So this is just simply the ratio of the total amount of debt to the total amount of equity. What does that come to? So for Apple back in 03, when Apple was a very good company to invest in, uh, their debt to equity ratio was 0 0.072. So almost a wash, right? So that's that's pretty good. You know, you would want, um, and in fact, this, this really means that they have um, more equity than they have debt, right? Uh, fast forward to say uh, 2013, however, on uh, what is that, August um, something. Um, Here's the HTML again. We'll scroll down and uh, we have debt to equity. Now we can see that this company is gr much great, much more greatly indebted. <laughs> I'm having a hard time with that one. Anyway, they have a lot more freaking debt, right? So uh, that's they've got almost 14 times the debt that they do equity. Um, so this company is obviously much more leveraged um, than they, they were in 2003. And the question is, of course, are they an okay investment right now? Um, and so this obviously has like a lot of um, inherent issues. And this is why using only one feature is very dangerous. Um, because um, as I mentioned before, tech companies 
generally have a lot of debt um, and they also have very little equity, <laughs> right? And so they have these two things um, that kind of work against you know the, them in these statistics and really um, eventually what we want to get ourselves to is measuring um, all kinds of things as well as putting them in their appropriate sector. So what is the normalized debt to equity ratio? Because like what we were talking about before, we need to normalize all this data. And the ideal normalization is, you know, normalize it on a scale that's negative one to one. So the scale of negative one to one for tech companies, um, you know, the, the value or the figure that we apply to say the debt to equity ratio may be different for a tech company as opposed to a bank. Okay, so what I mean by that is generally, let's say we've got debt to equity ratio, a negative one would be they've got, um, you know, below, let's say below uh, one debt to equity. So that means that their uh, equity is higher than their debt. So that would be say, we'll make that negative one. Okay, so if they have anything under 0 0.01 debt to equity ratio, that's a negative one. And then, you know, a positive one would be, let's say 12 debt, you know, so it's like 12 times their equity. That would be negative one. Well, that's okay for say, <clears throat> maybe Apple, because that's, a, that's kind of a range that they go in between. Um, so it's good for like a tech company, but for a bank or a mining corporation, that's not a good, you know, um, a good range, right? To say that that would, you know, that's the conversion. So, what I mean by conversion is, is we would take their debt to equity, and we would pro we would multiply. Let's say this is, you know, thirteen point seven five. We say anything above twelve, you know, is like a twelve is equal to negative one. So we would say twelve, or I'm sorry, twelve is equal to one in our case. So we would say twelve is to one as thirteen point seven five is to x, right? And we would solve for x, and that would give us a number most likely, and it would be greater than one, of course. Um, and that would be our algorithm for de determining the range here of debt to equity, but we wouldn't use that exact same algorithm for like a mining company, okay? So if that's all really confusing to you, that's just uh, sit tight for now. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna pull this data and we're just gonna pull one, one feature at the moment, but soon we'll pull many features because that's where machine learning is gonna uh, shine the brightest is when we can kind of compare, you know, um, 50, five zero features uh, over the course of a decade to really kind of get some useful insights. So um, first we need to pull the data. So the first package we need is pandas. Uh, we're gonna use pandas for kind of the manipulation of data sets. Pandas is really great for manipulating if you think in your head of like uh, spreadsheets. Um, it's really useful uh, and handy for manipulating spreadsheet-like data or even database data, right? A database is really a big spreadsheet. Um, so we're gonna use pandas for that. You can either go to pandas.pydata.org or again, if you are on Windows, I would just use this uh, website here, download um, the binary for you. Also, uh, I believe we already suggested to download NumPy, get it. Pretty sure I suggested DateUtil, grab PyTZ, and by now you should have set up tools. Um, and you should also have matplotlib, so cool. Um, so we need pandas, and that's it for modules that you need. So if you need to, pause the video, get pandas, and when you have pandas uh, downloaded and installed, uh, check to make sure you have it correct uh, by doing just a simple import pandas. Uh, and we're gonna import it as PD for our script, so import pandas as PD, save and run it uh, with, I use F5, just depends on what um, IDE you're using. As long as you don't get an error, you're ready to continue. So let's go ahead and start pulling this data. So import pandas as PD. Then we're gonna go ahead and import OS. Then we're gonna import time. And then we're gonna do um, from date time, import date time. Um, and I might forget, but we're gonna use MK time as well. I'll just do time.mk time, that should be just fine. Um, but we'll get there. We're going to use that because the way I've saved and stored these files, this ha the, the file, the, you know, the name of the file is the date. It goes year, month, um, yeah, year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. So we have to like convert that. So don't worry, I'll show you guys how to do that. So first, uh, what we'll do is we'll say path, and path is going to be the path um, to you know, this, or to, to intra-quarter rather. So mine is X backups intra-quarter. 
So your path might be different. You may not have an X drive for your X files. X colon slash backups, backups, intra order. So again, that's the path for mine. Your path is likely different. Um, so just put the path to whatever. So this, this way, every time we met re-reference path from here on out, our code will be identical. Now, what we're going to do is we want to pull from key stats. So we're going to make this new function, and it's going to be called, we're going to call it define key underscore, and actually key like this, stats. Uh, and then we're going to say for now gather, and gather is going to be what data are we trying to gather. And this is going to be the name of the entry in the table. So if we bring this over, we're trying to gather total debt to equity, this right here without the colon. So copy that and uh, paste it right there. So total space debt equity MRQ, perfect. Colon, that's our definition, that's our starting default parameter for example. And now we're gonna say the stats, under, actually stats path like this, equals path plus slash, do not use a backslash, if you use backslash you better use one more backslash. So forward slash, underscore key, uh, stats, camel case like that. So um, that's just ref. What have I done? Okay, that's just referencing, right? We're all since we use path, we're here, and then we're reference. We're saying the stats path is in here, right? And then we have all these files. So um, that's our stats path. Now we're going to have stock list, and what we're trying to get here is the list of stocks. So each of these directories is a stock, right? So we've got all these S&P 500 stocks and all of them have just just you know all of this decade worth of data in them so uh, we're gonna say here stock underscore list equals and then we're gonna say x zero for uh, x in OS walk stats path and what that does is it's going to gather um, just this name here basically and it's going to get them all for the entire uh, directory content so uh, let me just show you we're going to print uh, stock list um, and then we'll go ahead and run key stats whoops key stats okay and this contains basically a huge list of um, all of the, the directories here. So it's just a big, big list. Um, so that's that. Now, um, what we can do to run through this list is we're gonna say, um, uh, print stock underscore list. Okay, uh, let's comment that out because we don't really wanna keep printing that out. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for each underscore dir in stock underscore list. Uh, one colon. Uh, the reason we're doing that is initially it lists out. Um, in fact, let's just let's print this one more time. Just didn't see it because there was so much. Um, so we go all the way to the top. Um, it lists the root directory here, right? This is where we are. So uh, we don't want that. Um, that's not one of the directories. So anyway, for each dir in stock list one colon, colon, um, we're gonna say each underscore file equals os dot list dir, each dir. So what are we doing here? Let's go ahead and just print each file for anyone who is lost. I'm gonna go ahead and do a time dot sleep 15 so we don't get like a billion Okay, so this is listing out all the directories of that first uh, directory, so uh, for A, okay. Um, okay, and so that's where we are now. So we have all of the file names. So each file, and that's all of the file names. Um, then we're gonna say uh, each, let's see, for each dir, each file. Now what we say, if len of each underscore file, is greater than zero. So basically, like if we happen to have something in there, it's conceivable that some, one of these or a few of these companies have literally nothing in there. Uh, maybe there was no data, or maybe the data was incorrectly gathered, something like that. Who knows? 
Um, then we're going to say cool. Then we're going to run this for loop. So we'll say for file in each file. So each of those files, because if you remember, the output was just a bunch of those HTML files. Um, now we're ready to uh, begin to pull a bunch of data on these files. So first of all, our date stamp is in the file name. So date stamp equals uh, date time dot strip time, and that's strp time. It's not fully strip. Um, don't know why they did that to us, but they did. Uh, strip time, and we're going to strip the time from file. Um, so file is here, right? It's each of those files in file, and now you specify how that the kind of um, structure of that date stamp in that file, and that was percent capital Y because it was a full year. Then it was percent lowercase m, percent lowercase d, then percent capital H, percent uh, capital M, percent uh, capital S, and then followed by a dot HTML. So this is um, just kind of like the date uh, syntax, I guess. I'm not. I'm trying to think of the proper word to call like percent y, percent m. Someone can comment below what the actual official terminology for this official nomenclature. Uh, but this basically means a full year, a number day, or a number month rather, a number day. Oops, it's like this percent d number day, and then number hours, minutes, seconds, um, and then it was .html, just other stuff. So, anyways, adds our date stamp. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say the Unix um, Unix time equals um, time dot mk time of the date underscore stamp dot time tuple. So now let's go ahead and print Unix time. Um, and actually let's print date stamp and the Unix time just to make sure time dot sleep 15. Save and run that. And here we have 2004, January 30th, uh, the 19th hour, first minute seconds, and then you've got the Unix timestamp here. So I'll close out of this. Whoops. Okay. Um, so now we've got the time. Um, well, well, actually, at this point, we have the stock name and the time stamp for the data that we're about to collect. Uh, this video is hitting uh, 18 minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut off the video here, and in the next video, we'll actually dig into the file itself to parse out uh, the value that we're interested in, which in this case is total debt to equity MRQ. So anyways, that's what we'll be doing in the next video. If you have any questions or comments up to this point, uh, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Until next time.